Today we're looking at how to use macros in Google Sheets. So Google Sheets has this feature called macros, which allows you to record your actions and replay them at a later time. This is very useful when you have repetitive tasks that you have to do in Google Sheets. And then this allows you to record them and then replay them automatically to automate your workflows so you don't have to do it manually. So we're going to look at how to record and use macros. We're gonna give you enough detail that you will be able to use this effectively in your own projects. So first off, you can find macros by looking under the extensions menu in macros. You can see our first option is record macro. After we record our first macro, we'll then be able to replay it and show you how it works. So let's go ahead and record our first macro. Now, one thing to note is it doesn't matter how long this takes to do. It's going to just record each thing that you do. So you can think through what you're doing and the best way to accomplish it to record it effectively. And it may take a couple tries to get the effect that you're working for. So first thing you see is we have an option here at the bottom, use absolute reference or relative reference. And this has to do with the selected cell in Google Sheets. If you're using the relative reference, where your selected cell is, is going to matter both for recording and replaying the macro. Whereas when you use absolute reference, it doesn't matter where the selected cell is, it's going to be using a hard fixed reference based on the actual sheet. So we're going to go ahead and demo this, just begin, and then we'll work out from there. So I'm just going to do some very simple actions on this A1 cell. I'm just going to hit bold and a quick background color. And we're just going to go ahead and save this. Let's call it color for now. One thing you notice here is that you can also add a shortcut and then you can replay it later using the shortcut, which would be control plus alt plus shift plus zero, for example, or one. And this would be command plus alt plus shift on a Mac. So we're going to leave the shortcut off for now and we'll just use this name and we'll save our macro. One thing you'll see here is you can click edit script. After we re replay this script, we will show you how to look at them in the script editor. So now we're going to look at how to both authorize and run the macro. So the first time you run a macro in a Google Sheet, you will have to authorize it using this workflow right here. And so the reason for this, it lives in a different part of Google in their scripts section. And so you have to authorize access from the scripts to your Google Sheet. And that is what this flow does. So continue select your email, and then it's just telling you it wants to access the spreadsheet that the script has been installed in. So click allow, and now you have it authorized. And once you authorize a macro once, you won't have to do it again for the same Google Sheet. So now we can go back to extensions and macros, and we can actually run our color. But we're not gonna be able to tell now because I didn't reset our actions there. So now if we click color, you can see it just replayed our actions. Now you can see I have that selected cell there. Now let's say I select over here, go ahead and run this again. You'll see that it still is doing the action in cell A1. So let's go ahead and undo that. And now let's go ahead and record a new macro. And now this time I'm gonna have my selected cell in F1. Let's record the same macro, but let's just use relative reference. And so let's just do the exact same thing. Save, we'll call this color two. And now let's undo our changes and see what happens when we run our color two. So you can see this one highlights. If we select a different cell and run our color two macro, you can see now it's doing whatever cell we have selected. So we can run down here on this color too. And you can see you know, now wherever our cursor is or where our selected cell is, is where it's applying the changes. And so this also applies if you have more than one cell selected. So let's say we want to select this range. We can record a macro, just hit bold, save, call this bold. Now if we undo, we can this bold, you can see whatever ones we have selected are the ones that it's bolding. So let's try 
something a little different here. So that one you notice, even though we had selected the whole range there, we had selected the whole range before we start recording the macro. And so that's important to note. Let's look at how to record this macro so we can actually bold the whole column without having to select the whole column. So again, with relative reference, let's start here. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut on PC. It is Control plus Shift for and down arrow. On a PC, it will be Command Shift down arrow. You can see that now I'm selecting that whole column. If I add bold now, hit save, called bold two. And if we undo our action, now if I select create a date, hit bold two, you can see it does the whole column. And do a different column, same thing. So you can see that it matters where you have selected and what you do when you're using the relative reference. All right, so let's look at doing a couple more changes on this. First off, I'm going to clear out some of these old macros. So I'm going to go over here to manage macros. Let's go ahead and delete this by using remove. And you notice here that we can also assign the shortcuts if we wanted to. So now that we've removed our old macros, you can see now it's empty. Let's look at formatting perhaps our data table here. So let's go ahead, macro, record macros. And let's go ahead and use absolute reference this time. And I'm going to go ahead and use my shortcut. And so control, shift, right arrow to select all my columns, and then down arrow to select all my rows. And so let's do some alternating colors. There, we'll call that good. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this again, top row here, and just bold it. And then let's do some other actions. So I'm going to select this first row here in the data. I'm going to do Control Shift down, select all this. Let's go ahead and format this as a dollar sign. Let's go ahead and remove those decimal places. This is saying create a date, but showing a number instead. And that's because dates actually show up as a number if it doesn't automatically recognize it as a date. And this is just a numeric representation of the date. So we can go ahead and change this to an actual date here. And maybe we want to also fix how these aren't fully fitting. I'm just going to hit Control A to select my table here. Actually, let me go ahead and select up here. Now we selected the whole thing. Now these are all fitting. So when you double click on this, if you double click, for example, in one, it's just going to do that. If we click up here, and double click, then it's resizing all these columns to auto fit the contents. So this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and just do a quick border around this. Just make it thick enough to be able to tell and do something like that. So now we have done quite a few changes and we can take a look at what this is going to look like. Let's just call this format table. All right, let's go ahead and undo our changes now. All right. And now let's see what happens if we run this macro. You can see it stepping through all the changes that we made, and now it's done. So one thing we want to look at now is what happens on these things. So for example, it just formatted this table and did it beautifully. What happens if your data looks a slight bit different than it did before? So let's go ahead and do a format table. And what you'll see here, is it didn't quite get everything quite right. And so let's go ahead and undo this. Got some of the changes correct, and it didn't quite get some of the other ones. So let's go ahead and look at what we can do here to fix that. So let's go ahead and delete this macro. All right, so let's look at how we can resolve this. So this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna use relative references instead of absolute. Because what happened was even though we're using our shortcuts to select our data range, it was only selecting an absolute fixed reference. So let's go ahead and start with A1 again. I'm going to use the same shortcuts here. Let's go ahead and do our alternating colors. And then we'll go ahead and do all these same things. So I'm going to go ahead, select my column headers, and we'll go ahead and center them. I'm going to go ahead and select this. Do my dates. And then let's go ahead and make these bigger. And then finally, let's go ahead 
and put a border around this. All right. So now we'll go ahead and save that. Go back to here. Make sure that A1 is selected. And you'll notice that I started with A1 cell selected in the original when I started recording. So let's go ahead and run this macro format table. And you can see now that it correctly got the entire table. So one thing to know is if you're having issue going back and forth, you may need to try using relative or absolute depending upon if you have a same fixed size table or if your table is a different size. And then just pay attention to what cell you have selected when you start the macro and when you run the macro. All right, so let's look at another data set. And we're going to do a couple different actions here on this one. And we're going to add some formulas. So let's go ahead and kind of run our macro here, record it, and run through our changes on this one. So we're just going to stick with relative references. We'll start with some basic formatting. I'm using my keyboard shortcuts to select. And then let's go ahead and control shift down arrow, do our dates. Let's go ahead and center those. Then let's go ahead, turn these to currency and rounded. And let's go ahead and leave these not rounded because there are some decimals in there. So next, let's add another column here for profit. And let's add another one called profit margin. And so let's add here. We have I made a mistake here. It looks like there's amount of sales, not dollar sales. Let's go ahead and do that. Center line this. And then over here our profit, let's go ahead and grab our sales minus cost of goods. We'll go ahead and let it autofill. You can see it capture that autofill range. And then let's go ahead and grab our profit divided by our sales. Let that autofill. Go ahead and grab this, change it to percentage. Just like that. So you can see we have all our prices set to a standard 40% profit margin. Let's go ahead and add borders. And then let's go ahead and call this good. I'm going to call this one update table. So let's go ahead and do our actions here. Call that good. So again, I'm going to go ahead and click on my A1 cell. And let's go ahead and run this. So update table. And we'll see it replay those actions. Looks like the one thing it didn't get to do is it didn't pull down this profit margin. And so the reason for this, and I can show you how to compensate for this in the script. And so we'll run into that next and show you also how to fix this action. So let's go ahead and go to the app script. And so here we can see we have a format table, which was our first script that we ran. And then now we're working on an update table. So here we can see our function macro update table. And so you can see it's recording all these different actions. And so this may look like a bunch of nonsense to you. So if we go down through here, some of this makes sense to us. Some of this is a little confusing. So you can see some things. It's getting current cell, getting next data range. You can see that direction next, and this is to the right, and then down. Here's that row banding. It actually starts with this gray, and then actually changes it here. So it's kind of stepping through all these different changes. And so you can see here, we have, here's our first or third dollar sign, second dollar sign, our first dollar sign. So if you look, we went first, second, third. And so if we go back to this first one, we can actually remove this, and that's going to remove that step. And then if we go down, let's see here, looking for autofill. Okay, so here's our formula for our profit margin. You can see it's using this, what's called R1C1. And so this is row and column. 
look a few things reversed and um, we have our this would be our letter and then row number and so what we had here was h2 minus f2 there and then here it's autofill to neighbor now the way to autofill works and i'll just demo this real quick here is if i try to autofill this which if you double click it's supposed to autofill but it's not doing anything because it's not seeing anything in the cell beside it and so if we do autofill in this one, which if you click on this blue square, double click on it, it's going to autofill. And so now if we autofill, we can do that. The problem is the script doesn't see this as filled yet because it hasn't applied that action. And so what I'm going to do here is add a flush. And what this is going to do is it's going to apply this formula. So I'm going to go ahead and put it above here before it adds that formula. And it's going to actually apply this before then it does this autofill. And so if we back up here, we're going to skip setting this as a dollar sign. And then we're going to add that formula should work now. So if we go to update table, you can see it skipped, setting that as a dollar sign. And now our profit margin went all the way down. And so if you have a step like that that's skipping at the end when you run it, you may just need to add a spreadsheet app.flush, and that is applying all the current actions before moving on. So some of this may be a little hard to find, but if you kind of go through step by step, you might be able to figure out some of these that make sense to you. And so this autofill is talking about formulas, and you may see some here that you recognize, such as setValue.profit, and there's profit margin, and then you can kind of see some of these formulas. And so you may have to spend a little bit of time learning more about AppScript to get better at this. But with a little bit of practice, a little bit of looking through this, maybe recording some short macros and looking at what results, you'll be able to get familiar with this and be able to do some tweaks to it to get it to work correctly. All right, so that should do it for today. That should get you going on doing some different projects with macros. And you can see how this can be very useful, be able to automate different things you may need to do. Tune back again soon for more videos.